and she was like really holding me accountable to a lot of stuff like hey look if you don't you don't want what i want then maybe we should go our separate ways you know no no you ain't going to the gym with makeup on it no i don't want nobody else you know what i'm saying so so uh, no that's so real. <laughs> it's a real. Oh, this really happened. This not a. This not. And I had to really just understand the role of a man in a marriage, you know. And it's very clear and defined because I believe that you know we we, we go through these phases in our life as men. In twenties, we we want to conquer the world. We want to do all these things and everything like that. In our thirties, we begin to realize what we'll never do again. And in forties, we're saying. This is what I want my life to look like. You have to define where you're going to be in the relationship because what happens is you get into a relationship and you have a boss chick that's used to doing stuff, getting stuff done, doing deals, da da da, da. and then you have two like Daryl's very masculine. He's not going to let a woman run him. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to let a woman run him. So you you get into a relationship where you have a masculine man and a masculine a dominant masculine female. And they're doing this all the time mm -hmm. because I want to lead. I want to lead. Well, I do this. I do that. I lead. I have businesses. I do this and that. I can lead. And then you're emasculating him, not knowing, and you're making her her feel like I'm just going to puff up even more. This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have some special guests with us today. I am so excited about this mirror series and I'm excited about the wisdom they're going to bring, the experience, uh, long time friend. And I'm pretty sure you're going to hear all of that uh, as we <laughs> converse today. We're going to discuss marriage 3.0, lessons learned and love renewed with Daryl and Shakira Rivers. How are you both doing this evening? Doing amazing. Great. All is well, brother. Yes, you both look great, of course. I've uh, been knowing Daryl for years. Um, finally get to meet the beautiful missus. So I'm excited that you would take some time out to be a guest on the show today. Jumping into this topic, lessons learned and love renewed. Let's get into it. What made you both say, I'm willing to try this marriage thing the third time? <laughs> Do you want to take that question first or... Or you want me to jump into that? You can you can answer first. All right, well, Sean, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, brother. I wasn't quick to jump. I'm just gonna be <laughs> so uh, okay. So precursor. Yes. This is both our third marriage. Yes. So you know, I, mm -hmm. I after the after the second man, I'm talking to therapists. I had I went through therapy. You know, a lot of self-talk, talking with close friends and everything. And my statement was, I'm not doing this again. And I was on that, on that, on that, on that for a while, you know. And then here comes this one right here. And, you know, I'm going to let her tell her, you know, from her perspective, you know. But I knew that I wanted to be with her, but that that whole marriage thing, man, was like a, it was a pebble in the shoe that, that hindered my walk. It's kind of like, I'm walking towards, man, this, this pebble in the shoe is kind of, uh. and uh, we, we got into a situation, man, towards we're kind of off and on, you know, one minute we're good. Next minute we're not one minute we're good. Next minute we're not. And she was like really holding me accountable to a lot of stuff. Like, Hey, look, if you don't, you don't want what I want. Then Maybe we should go our separate ways. And for a minute, Sean, I was like, all right. <laughs> and then some things went down and happened. And I was like, you know what? Nah, she she belongs to me. And, you know, I, I don't want to be without her. And I'm sure that that part is going to come out, you know, <laughs> as as we continue to, to talk, you know. But no, it, was, it wasn't any, you know, <clears throat> crazy, like event outside of us mm -hmm. that made me say hey i'm ready to jump back in and again it was more just me realizing that i didn't want to be without her mm -hmm. and and just really saying all right i'm ready to do this again and and 
thinking, believing and knowing more so that in this marriage, you know, the best and the highest version of me is going to be involved. You know, not the past me, not the the person without uh, particular experiences, but the highest version of me will will be in this marriage and it should work, you know, so. So uh, what made me want to get married again, specifically to Daryl? Um, so like he said, I this is my third marriage as well. And after the second marriage, I said the same thing. I, I will never do this again. I want my own place. I just want to do my own thing. I don't want to do this, you know. But I have always wanted to be a wife and a mother. And after I got scarred those two marriages, I took some time. I realized that I was the problem because I was accepting things that the exes were doing to me. I was accepting behaviors and things like that, that I felt I should have been like in a fixer mode. And after second marriage, I realized, okay, both, both people should be whole people. And then, you know, a lot of people say, well, my other half, no, you should be whole. Your partner should be whole. And then you get together and then you are even better. And so when I realized that after I did my, the work on myself, I felt like, okay, I'm ready to date again because I do want to be married. I do want to be a wife. I love, I, I'm a really good wife. There are a lot of things that I'm not, but I am a good wife and I'm a good mom. So although I thrived in my roles, I feel like beforehand, um, they did not. And so there was an imbalance. And so when I realized once I became balanced, I could attract another balanced partner and, um, you know, enter into a healthy marriage and a partner well first you know dating relationship and then marriage so i met daryl and i immediately was like i was like oh you know our first conversation we talked for a couple of hours and it was just like i knew him and then there were just like a little like back and forth getting to the first date right but there were so many things you know and then we finally had our first date and everything just felt organic and like, I don't know. Like, I remember, be, I remember feeling like you love me. Just say you love me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember, I was like, do you love me? I, and I felt I loved him. And this was like three months into just like interacting with each other, like first date. So long story short, I just knew you know based on like how that it was just organic and it was the chemistry was there we wanted the same things I'm a relationship marriage girl he's a relationship marriage man and we just clicked so I'm like this is my husband but I, I was fighting it Sean I ain't gonna lie I ain't gonna lie I was fighting it I was fighting it but she she didn't mention that you know the first three dates we had scheduled I already know who was it it didn't happen, you know. I'm just gonna say, you know, I was expecting the date, and the date didn't happen. So, you know, when we finally did have that first date, I, I, I can't say I was like, okay, <clears throat> it's something here. But as I said, Sean, I was really like, I don't know if I want to do this marriage thing again. And I'm gonna be honest with you, part of it is pride and ego, man, because you know, who wants to be, you know, who wants to be a one-time divorcee? Who wants to be a two-time divorcee and who wants to enter in a possible before you meet your person three-time divorcee? So I'm like, man, like you say, scared to remarry. I'm like, man, I don't want to go so through this. I, I was scared. Oh I ain't gonna God. lie. I was scared. I was scared. You know, we had conversations. We had one conversation maybe be like, nah. You remember? You know what it was, <laughs> yep. right? Yep. So, so she had her place. I had my place. Now here, mind you, I'm a single guy. This is the little dog here. He trying to hop in the... <laughs> It was just me, he and I, me and my dog, yeah. you know, in a four bedroom, two story, 2,800 right. square foot house, yeah. you know, gigantic backyard. I got the lay of the land. I had a gym, had a bar, had a studio in the house, everything. Right. And we got to talk and she, and she said one thing, man, cause I work hard, man. I'm like, I'm traveling, I'm owning this business. I'm working hard and all this stuff. 
And then she said one thing, man, like, hey, uh, well, maybe you just need to downsize some stuff and get rid of some of this stuff so we can move in together. And my first thing was <laughs> my second marriage. I lost a lot of stuff. I gave up a lot of stuff. I'm not doing that again. And that, like, it really had me like, I don't know. What, why I have to give up stuff? How come we just can't come together and have more stuff? Why I got to give up some? You know, so yeah, and that 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 increased the fight in me a little bit. So yeah, so yeah. I, but I, guess I, what, man? She got ended up she rid got, of got, got rid of the whole stuff. stuff. <laughs> man, I got rid of so much stuff, man. Oh my god. Yep. yep. That's so funny. Hey, well, you both made it work. So here we are having this conversation, right? right? <laughs> How do you navigate challenges differently in this marriage compared to previous ones? So I would say I'm more, so we're more mature. We learn from our mistakes. We learn from, especially, I can only speak for myself in that I really, that he's a whole different person. And when we have challenges, instead of me, in the past, the operation would be more passive aggressive or more, uh, okay, we're going to fix this. We are going to be direct about what we need to do. Um, and, and even before we got married, we talked about a lot of things that like the challenges that I saw mm-hmm. or the things that I saw. And I felt like, okay, this isn't right. In my own personal like journey to just being a better woman, I realized where I would like try to fix other people's stuff and try to, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I really took the approach of, and especially with him, because I'm, I wanted to be with him so bad. I just knew mm-hmm. that I, this is my husband. And he just wasn't, it was, he wasn't getting it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't getting it. But then I was like, you know what, Shakira? As a man, he knows what's best for him. I don't need to force, if this is, if this is the, path he chooses to take whether I feel it's right or wrong it's not in it's not my uh it's not my task to show him and tell him this is what you need to do this is what you need to do he's a grown man and he know he thinks he knows what's best and what <laughs> happened he he knows what's best. and what ended up happening is that he realized like you said I didn't want to be without her and so for the difference is that I don't try to like micromanage and uh, code be codependent. Like I need to fix this stuff. But no, okay, you that's what you want to do. Okay, I will see you in about three to six months. Yeah, and yeah, that's, that's, that's what happens <laughs> when it when it don't work out the way that you think it you know it it should work out, and that's what happens. So I'm really more so. I give him. I, I want him to lead. I don't want to say I I let him lead. Mm-hmm. He leads. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, okay, I trust your judgment as my husband and as a man to to make it happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I feel like that's the difference, you know, comparing, you know, the past. Mm-hmm. I would say for me, Shaw, mm-hmm. uh, with, with her, I realized I needed things in my life that I didn't know. It's almost like if someone say, hey, man, you know, uh, you want some? You have an appetite for Australian food, and if you've never had Australian food, there's no way for you to have an appetite for it. Okay, so so with her, I realized there were certain things I needed, and in and in, in my previous relationships, we never really went over, identified, or defined uh, what our roles are in this marriage. That's one thing that I can say about she and I is that we are very clear, defined, and in alignment on what our roles are in the marriage. And that never, that's something I never did. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like, okay, well, we do this, we do that, we do it together. But we never really talked about the roles mm-hmm. that, you know, that that we're supposed to uphold and, and really act out and play out and, you know, flesh out more to say. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one significant thing. The other thing is that I have no desire to change anything about her. You know, I, I remember telling her, I said, when I first met you, it was a lot of stuff I wanted to change. 
And then afterwards, the only thing I wanted to change was your last name. You know, so so, you know, I got to a point of really just accepting her as she is and, and not saying, well, man, this would be so much easier if, you know, because we do that. We do that. Man, this would be so much easier if it's more in the lines of. This is what we are and what we are is pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, but I think and, and I teach this in my leadership classes, you know, when you're leading something, whatever's easiest for you is usually harder for the other people that you're leading. You know, and, and I had to really just understand the role of a man in a marriage, you know, and it's very clear and defined because I believe that, you know, we, we, we go through these phases in our life as men in 20s. We, we want to conquer the world. We want to do all these things and everything like that. In our 30s, we begin to realize what we will never do again. And in 40s, we're saying, this is what I want my life to look like. You know, so when I was married in my 20s, it was kind of like, hey, I wanted all of these things. And in my 30s, it was kind of like, I ain't never doing that again. Mm -hmm. And now in my 40s, it's kind of like, this is what I want my life to look like. This is what I want it to feel like. So if it's anything that I can say that we've done i've i've specifically done different is a greater level of self-awareness concerning how i'm supposed to be in a marriage mm -hmm. as far as being a man and the man in the marriage so that that was a big thing for me mm -hmm. and she helped me with that because you know I, I like i said i was fighting it and all of that but i realized i wanted to be with her but it's kind of like you're on that fence yeah I want this man, but man, if I go on this other side, man, is this going to go crazy? Yeah, is this yeah. going to be this? And then, you know, you get into it. And another thing, though, Sean, mm -hmm. in every single relationship I've ever had, it started out really, really great and then took a decline. With us, we had a rocky start, but it just kept, you know, getting better and better and better and better and better. It was almost like reverse of every relationship I've been in, mm -hmm. you know? So I was like, oh, this just keeps getting better, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm loving it. Mm, that's that's beautiful i love that you said that you don't try to change her because that's something that i had to learn myself um in my first marriage right it was just like trying to change you know my ex-wife to be who i who i thought she should be right and i'm just like mm -hmm. who am I to say who you know who i think she should be and this time around my life is so much easier because i don't try to uh change you know i let her be right. Um, and, and we evolve over time. Like there will be, there will be change without me having to try to change her. Right. You know, let, let, let's just say there will be growth, not change. How about that? Growth. Cause that's yes. how I feel like we're, we're going to grow with we, we, uh, uh, apple tree is an apple tree. It just, it grows, that's true. you know? So, so I look at it from that perspective. And another thing, Sean, is that man, I just don't want to be right anymore. Hmm. <laughs> I don't want to be right. You know, and I tell her often, I will gladly lose an argument if I can win the person. That's You know, yeah. I don't want to be right. I want what is right, but I don't want to be right. You know, whatever is right, let's do that. I don't have to be right. I tell her in a minute, I'm like, okay, you're right. She's like, well, I'm not wanting to be right. I'm, to be right. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to be right, but I'm like, look, I don't have to be right. And before... <laughs> I, I I want it to be right because I feel like I had a valid point. And you don't understand me. And you need to see exactly what it is that how from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And and I realize that we're different people. And sometimes we're going to disagree, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's perfectly fine. You know, I don't want somebody that's just like me. Mm -hmm. You know, similar styles make similar mistakes. Mm. I'm going to make my share of mistakes, but I don't want us making the same mistakes, you know? <laughs> yeah. so. I think too, when you're younger, you have the energy to argue. You have, you have the energy <laughs> to fight. It's like, now I'm like, okay, that's what you want to do. <laughs> okay. And we don't have, we don't, yeah, we don't, we, we don't. don't, we really don't fight regularly, but you know, in the past, like, you know, you, you have fights when you're younger. And I know for me, I, you know, I'm like, like you said, if I know that I'm right and I'm like, okay, well, we can have this debate because I'm going to be right, period, <laughs> you know? And I feel like I'm a fair person, mm -hmm. but my tone and delivery is not always received. You know, this is something that I'm working on. But when you're younger, why are you looking like that? Well, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I ain't this is something I'm actively working on, tone and delivery. 
But when you're younger, you have the energy. And I'm 38. That's not old, but it's too old to be fighting. And, you know, yeah. like, I don't listen. I'm, tr- I'm trying to go to sleep. I don't have time for this. If this is what you want to argue, is this okay? You got it. It's, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and, I think that makes the difference too. the energy. Like we don't have time. We just well, try to reach our goals and be happy, you know? Yeah. And I, yeah. And, and that's good. Cause and, and Shakira, like you talked about the delivery, cause I was watching a, a pastor the other day and he were saying like these different kind of personality types, like the way people talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, some people are commanders. Uh, some people are great listeners. I can't remember all all four of them. I'm mess them up. He was just saying that that a lot of that a lot of times that comes from birthing order. Because sometimes you can be the oldest, and the oldest are usually commanders because they used to they usually parentified right because they have to watch their other brothers and sisters, so they used to handing out command you know uh, you do this you do that so sometimes the delivery can come a little uh, abrasive and you don't mean to come off like that it's just you're just used to handing out orders and i think that so darren this is his lane I that's think he's my lane like ready to be like yeah this is not you know i'm a behavioral analyst yeah. oh yeah oh i already know yeah you yeah so yeah, yeah. we are literally the total opposite we are very much alike but I am, we are like, we complement each other so well to where I, he's very kind. His communication style is very much like, you know, I'm calm. Me, it's not that I'm not calm. It's just that I am very direct. This is what we're doing. Da, 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 like A, B, C, and D. If you're mad about it, I'm not trying to be rude or mean, but, and I am the oldest of my parents' kids. So, <laughs> but it's more so like, how I feel, I feel it works for me. This, so we're not mincing words. We're not that you know. There's no confusion. Whereas you know, Daryl is very uh, polite. Polite. I'm not not polite. I'm just very. <laughs> I'm just. I wouldn't even say. It. Sometimes I can be abrasive to people that I love and care about, but mm-hmm. it, it comes from a, a place of love because everybody knows me. You know what I mean. So, but I think just as women, especially as Black women our tone and delivery just on the culture you know what i mean and and depending on how you grew up like you're the people that you looked up to you know my mom is a very strong woman and that she gets stuff done she you know she's she i look up to her so and she's we're not we're our communication styles are i don't think they're like because she said she she's one of the people including daryl Tone of delivery, Shakira. Tone of delivery. But <laughs> you do, you guys do have similar communication she, styles. She, she's very decisive. It's not. It's there's no gray area. It's black and white. So I feel like as black women, we get that rap where I feel like it's not necessarily fair. But this is something that I had to work on because I wasn't always this way. I wasn't always like I need to respect this man because he is amazing and not like not consciously like disrespect him but unconsciously Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is what's happening and i need to refine that like i need to i need to scale it back because again he's a man and he knows what's best for him even if we usually know what's best but even if even if we feel and i think this is hard for women we know what's best, but he thinks something different. You got to let him do what he knows is best for him at that moment in time. And that takes growth. And I had to, I had to fall on my face many times to realize that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. That's that, that's that growth and maturity right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, how, how do you approach blending families or dealing with past relationships in this marriage? Like, how is the, how do you have kids and like, how does that work? How does that dynamic work? Man, this is good. I'm glad you asked that. Like, honestly, our kids get along so good, Sean. Like they, from day one, they just quit. Yeah. Yep. Like click before like, we even like we're like okay we get married like when they first yeah, met each other they just when we were dating click. Mm, they just so cool. click and it was just so good it's a great feeling because that's a concern you're like what 
what if the kids be this way and that way? That's another issue and all of this. And understanding new relationship, new marriage, you're learning one another. The issues are going to come with that, not alone, you know, the kids. But they just automatically click. And the thing is, is this. We respect one another's space and authority in the kid's life. So, so let's just say if there's a thing that that Shakira notices with so so you know uh, my my natural children are all adults, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and you know I, I I've raised them and raised them and raised them, but now they're they're twenty three and twenty two. Mm -hmm. This is a new thing because I've never been a parent to a twenty three and twenty two year old, you know. So 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 there's new things that are navigating and all that. So we do that together. She's like, well, I think this, and I think that and she's made some great suggestions, but it's more so she tells me and, and advises me and supports me in the ways to direct and speak to them. And I listen now on, on, cause this is, this is new territory for both of us, right. Mm -hmm. Concerning the 20, 12, 23, mm -hmm. but you know, the 17 to 13 year old are different because I've been there. I, I, I had a 17 year old before I've had a 13 year old before, you know, and, and, and as we talk to that, I don't just go direct. I say, Hey, well, this is what I think. This is what I feel. And they're boys, you know? So I'm like, okay, as a young man, this, is this, and, and then when there's something happens, I'm like, look, my son used to do the same thing. This is not, this is not, you know, yeah, he was the exact same way. This is what I've done. I understand they're different kids, yeah. but you know, uh, we are really, really good on that. We are, re that's one thing that I say that we are very good at when it comes to the blended family. You know, uh, she has, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations with my son. You know, I have one-on-one -on -one conversations with the boys and, you know, it, everything just flows so good. We all love one another. Everything is really, really good with that. And of course, you know, in the beginning stage, like, I wonder how this is going to be sure. kind of thing, you know, and then you really don't know where the kids' minds are at. Like, how are, you know, what are they thinking and how are they perceiving this? Because my children have never been around me in a, in a serious relationship with another woman aside from their mother. Mm. You know, so I was kind of like, okay, let's see how this works. And back in 2021, I'm like, all right, you, you got to meet the kids. You know, I, I already know that this is this is a thing. You know, uh, I'm I'm really feeling you and all this kind of stuff. And I'm thinking like, wow. And, and so I we were here in Texas. The kids were in Arizona. We're driving and we're getting in the car. And I'm thinking like, I'm actually taking her to meet my damn kids. <laughs> like you know, I didn't say this to her, but I'm in my head like, yeah, dang, yeah. I'm, I'm sitting up here talking about I ain't never get married again, but I'm taking this woman to meet my kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it, it was it was pretty cool. Awesome. Uh, my perspective on that, first of all, is very important to me because I, like m my sons are so important to me, their upbringing, their influence, the people that influence them, um, especially as young black men, mm -hmm. it's very important to me that they have a stable environment and a stable and somebody that they can look up to. Mm -hmm. um if you know gonna get married again then it has to be somebody that is outstanding um and everything that daryl is and so we have that checked off and like he said you know when they met even before we like made everything official they clicked yeah. like really they clicked and yeah. um it was great and so then when we took this next step to get engaged get married and build a life together my approach was just I want all of the kids to understand that we love them no matter what we're getting, you know, your parents are getting married again, you know, and this is a change, but that doesn't change how much we love you and care about you. Mm -hmm. And the person that we choose to be married to is a good match for you. Right. You, you won't have to worry about being treated differently. You mm -hmm. won't have to worry about anything. Just mm -hmm. trust that this person is amazing. And, you know, when, you know, I'm really good at seeing things before they become a problem. So, you know, where there are individual issues with each child, you know, based on what their needs are, based on their developmental age, we address it. We talk about everything. We, I tell him everything, you know, I have to have communications with, you know, uh, the 
father, I communicate. And even though the older kids, they're, they're really grown, some of them still need input from dad. I don't overstep my bounds. I state my opinion, but I don't overstep my bounds. I respect the role of their mother. This is their mother. So I'm not going to jump into that. You know what I mean? But we have boundaries and, you know, we respect each other in that way. And so we just love, like, it's, it's been really good. We haven't had any major issues. We have communications and any minor things we talk about, we iron out, we get, um, help from like professionals, like family counselors and things like that to make sure we make sure all the kids are supported, yeah. but we have a path and boundaries for everybody based on their needs. Mm -hmm. And one thing I can say also, Sean, is that when we were younger parents, I don't know if we really understood the trajectory of our lives, mm -hmm. you know? You're raising kids and you, you, you're, you're building another human while you're still building your so, life yes. and building, you know, mm -hmm. and at this stage, you know, the career path is set. We know exactly where we're going, what we want, how we're going to do it and all of this kind of stuff. So therefore it's a, it's a different type of energy in the house. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, well, I don't know kind of energy. It's like, this is what we're doing, yeah. you know, kind of thing. And that energy it's something that I've never experienced before. Different. It's different, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, oh man, it, we, we've had a lot of firsts though in our relationship, yeah. you know, first time I felt this way, first time it, we were having a conversation, I said, look, I'm gonna tell you this, I've never been jealous, ever, <laughs> ever, <laughs> with no one. And I said, I don't know, man, what, what kind of little voodoo dial you got on the, your boy, <laughs> I don't know what kind of little incantate, little, 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 little the spells you don't put up, but I don't know what it is. It's kind of like, you know, I feel like, I, and I was, I wouldn't say it's an unhealthy jealousy. It's not. It's I more like, it. like, like you belong to me, you mine. I you know it. what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so it's kind of like, hey, you know, no, no, you ain't going to the gym with makeup on it. No, I don't want nobody else. You know what I'm saying? So, so, uh, no. That's child. a real. <laughs> it's a real, oh, this really happened. This not a, this not. <laughs> That's. Funny. Hey, what, 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 hey, I, I saw that. Part. Hey, what, 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 why you, why you at the gym with makeup on? What, what, what's happening? You know, but that was never me. So it's kind of like so much uncharted territory. But it's, it's just, it's good to feel that way about somebody. Mm -hmm. You know. So yeah, that's beautiful, man. Yeah, you, you know, you, you grow, you learn. You know what I'm saying? Un uncharted waters, you know, you get into those uncharted waters together, and y'all go to it together, and y'all come out better on the end because. Y'all both experiencing something new together, which is powerful. Yeah. I want to jump into this bonus round. So we're going to go, we talk about uncharted waters. We're going to go a little deeper. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> All right. Y'all ready? Yeah. Let's go. All right. I'm going to ask both of you the same question, just on the opposite sex. So Daryl, what is the biggest mistake you see husbands make in marriages? Oh, wow. Uh, comparisons. Comparison to like ex spouses, comparison to everything, everything. Like, I, I don't compare to anyone or anything. You yeah. know, I, I I've spoken to people like, oh man, I never had to deal with this before, and this person was this way, this person that way, and why can't my wife look like that? This girl works out, so and so, so and so, and all of this kind of stuff. And you know what? When I'm at my job and I'm working, man, you know that you know this person talks to me this way, and I come home and I got to deal with that, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Um. And I've never compared her to anything or anyone. You know, it's, this is so unique. You know, that is one thing that, that that's the one of the main things I can say uh, is is a big mistake that that husband makes in it. And the close second, mm -hmm. I, I think the close second is unrealistic expectations. Mm. Uh, so, so therefore, you know, it's, it's more like, well, she should be doing this and she should be doing that and she should be doing this and she should be doing that. And I've had many conversations with a couple of very close friends that I've been knowing for decades. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who goes into a field and expects something to grow that you never planted? So, you know, if you're not creating an environment for certain things to be a certain way, why are you expecting them to be a certain way? Mm. You know, so that that is a very close second. 
that, mm. you know, that I recognize. Like I tell her, whenever we're out in public, you don't touch a door handle. Mm. You know, I'm pulling up seats. And if she touches the door handle, we don't have a problem. You know, I'm like, what, what are you doing? Like, you know, why are you opening that? This, that, and the other. I'm very clear on my role as her husband. You know, and I, I think that men in general want a certain type of wife, but yet they're not being a certain type of husband. That's cool. You know? I agree. Yeah. And Shakira, what do you think is the biggest mistake you see wives make in marriage? So I, I want to take it back before you even get married because when you're in the dating market and where you're looking for your husband, ladies do a lot of things wrong. So I, this is just my opinion based on experience. I have data points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's no wrong answer. Mm. Yeah. There's no wrong answer, but I will tell you this based on like my own experience and based on what I see other people experience, you have to know what your role is. So there's, there's different energies and in today's society, like in the dating market and the, the content that I've got here, it's, it's, it's a lot about masculine and feminine energy, but people don't really know what that means. So it's not just because ma males and females, we all have masculine and feminine energy. You have lots of boss chicks out here that's making it happen, that's working, that's grinding, grinding harder than a lot of men. And that intimidates some men. If, if the man is not strong in his masculine. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, you have to define where you're going to be in the relationship. Because what happens is you get into a relationship and you have a boss chick that's used to doing stuff, getting stuff done, doing deals, da da da, da. And then you have two, like Daryl's very masculine. He's not going to let a woman run him. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to let a woman run him. So you, you get into a relationship where you have a masculine man and a masculine, a dominant masculine female, and they're doing this all the time mm -hmm. because I want to lead. I want to lead. Well, I do this. I do that. I lead. I have businesses. I do this and that. I can lead. And then you're emasculating him, not knowing, and you're making her her feel like I'm just gonna puff up even more. Uh -huh. So number one, there's nothing wrong with with being a successful, educated woman nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. but you have to know where to set that down in your relationship so where women get it wrong is the where they feel like oh, i have to make the money i have to uh, have the kids i have to be superwoman and then you tire you stress you don't want to give your husband what he needs because you're tired because you're trying to be him mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't be him that's good and when i i tell him all the time i'm not trying to be you yeah. You do all that. Can I do it? Perhaps. Do mm -hmm. I want to do it? No, I don't want to be you. I don't want to be the lead. I don't want to pay all the bills. I don't want to take care. I, you know, everything I do. Women don't understand the value that you bring when you prioritize your family, your children, your husband. I have all, and I, even before I became a mom, I want to have any type of business entrepreneurship and I've been an entrepreneur for forever. I can't work for other people <laughs> except for him. I can't, like I can't. So I feel that. Yeah. Like I can't. So everything else is family first and then everything else revolves around it. Money doesn't money matters, but that's mm -hmm. his job to bring in the money. Mm -hmm. I support you. Mm -hmm. I do all of his scheduling. I do all the contract negotiations and guess what? It revolves around my family. It revolves around my husband. He comes first. So I I feel strongly that this is where women get it wrong because society says you got to be the boss chick. You got to work. You got to have the kids. You got to cook. You got to clean. And you got to take care. You have to burn yourself out, which ends up neglecting your husband. Well, I got to make the money. I got to do this. No. So understand what you want before you get out there in a dating pool and then then you get married and you you and your husband are like this because you're trying to be him and he kind of wants you to be because it's, everything is all discombobulated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you know exactly who you are and what you want, 
success. And that's what happened. I knew exactly yeah. what I wanted in, a, in our date in my dating profile is what I want. <laughs> and that's what I got. So yeah. knowing what you want, that's the mistake. Knowing what you want, knowing who you are, and knowing what you what you want your life to look like, and not letting any not letting society tell you what that right. looks like is the key. Yep, it did. I totally agree. Uh, Daryl, from seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Oh my God, it didn't teach me anything about marriage. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know if we ever had this conversation. My childhood was crazy, man. And my parents were never really together. I didn't meet my dad till I was like 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if it was anything it taught me, it taught me what I didn't want. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people, people, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I say this a lot. We just had this conversation. I say, if you love the cake, you cannot hate the ingredients, mm -hmm. you know? So, so the things that make you who you are, you gotta learn to love them, mm -hmm. you know? So, so a lot of my resilience, a lot of my tenacity, a lot of my, my, you know, I'm going to work this out and figure it out on my own. It comes from my childhood, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so if anything that I can say, you know, observing my parents, which was not a good observation. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's anything, it, it it more so put me in a position to really do my best to understand. Like I really, you know, uh, Stephen Covey, fifth habit of highly successful people, seek first to understand, then to be understood, right? Mm -hmm. I, I live that. I always want to understand. And, and the thing, and another thing is that of this, I can, I, and I say this to her all the time, I, I can truly say with all my heart, I unconditionally love her. Sometimes we don't like each other. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> that that comes to the territory. Yeah. Right, right. That that, yeah. That, that's I that's that's an ingredient. Her. That's an ingredient, right? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So this is the thing. I love my parents, but sometimes I don't, I don't, I'm not really vibing with you right now. And I, I learned that early. Mm. I learned that early in life as a kid. I love you. But I don't like what you do and how you behave and how you respond and how you treat me and how you provide for me, how you protect me. I don't like any of that. I love you, but I don't like it. So I've been in that area since five, mm. four or five years old. I've been in that, you know, love versus like, and mm -hmm. just, you know, I'm, I'm about to be 49, you know what I'm saying, pretty soon. And, and you know, that that's, that's you know, 44 years of, of being in that space and understanding that, man. Yeah. I really, I, I know it, it helps us because, you know, I always tell her, I, I love you. It's nothing that you can do that's going to make me not love you. And, and, she, and, but certain things, you know, I might not like, and I'm sure it's the same way for me. You know, like, I don't like when you do this, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's the, one of the main things that I can say I picked up from my parents. That's good. And Shakira, what about you? From seeing your parents' uh, relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? So I had a, my, uh, my childhood was completely opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up with my parents, my dad, my, both of my parents served in the army. And I grew up with both of them being there. And a lot of things you don't realize until you're grown. I had, when I tell you like the perfect childhood, I have all the great memories. I have the amazing memories of Christmas and birthdays and just with my brothers and moving, you know, from mm. state to state. And then once I became 19, my parents kind of started to, uh, I started to see the uh what's how do i say like the uh, chinks and the valleys of the relationship yes. and not the mountaintop yeah i saw so it's like when you're a kid and you don't really know what's going on you see oh you're in your own little world and i started to realize like dang you know my parents are having problems but i never heard them arguing i i can say like twice in all of my life that i heard them kind of have a disagreement so what I wanted was what my parents had was a family was my literally a, we were talking about this other day. I'm like, we were, I wanted to manifest we this. I wanted to be an army wife. I wanted to do that. And it's so interesting not to bring up the ex, like all my, you know, everybody was a veteran or served, which is <laughs> yeah. not, it's so crazy. Yeah. So yeah. I literally created that. And so what it, what it told me was that my mom always, I remember 
going to sleep. You had no milk in the fridge. Waking up, mom went and got it. Yeah. My mom handled business. She yeah. was about her business. She was about her kids. We had a clean house. We had food. We had lunch. We had everything. We didn't want for anything. Mm. And I didn't see my parents argue. So I saw the family, like the benefit of family. And so that's what they taught me. But on the flip side, after being an adult and, you know, after, after, you know, after 18 and me and my mom started to get closer, I started to realize the lows of marriage. And I started to realize, I mean, my mom, like when we started to really connect and she started to share things with me that she wouldn't tell me when she, when I was like 15, these are the struggles of marriage. And my parents were married for 22 years. So the lows of marriage where she endured for her children and just for like, I love your dad. I want this to work. Mm -hmm. What it taught me was family values, resilience, love, like just, you know, your commitment to your children and your spouse, even, even when it's not, when it's uh, not sweet, when it's not sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And I, think that's the biggest takeaway especially now when it's not when it's what well, i'm used to like especially like not married oh this ain't working for me bye bye mm -hmm. that's what <laughs> yeah. Like, this, yeah like this is oh this was so for me i know especially with daryl and i'm like i'm i'm willing to fight because daryl's a good man like i and i will say that because we're married now like he is he is a, an amazing man mm. and that's what my, my, my parents taught me and specifically my mom that, you know, you stick it out, you know, until you can't take it anymore until it's just unbearable. You just, you this is your commitment to yourself and your, your family, you know, to, to, to see it to the end. Yeah, for sure. Okay. This is a multiple choice question, but it's simple. Uh -oh. Okay. So Daryl, what's harder for you to say? Is it a, mm -hmm. I apologize. B, I need help. C, I love you. Or D, I was wrong. I need help. She's just, I, look, <laughs> look. The moment you said I need help, I was like, it's nothing else that's going to be above that for me. And the bottom line, though, Sean, is that, you know, it, it has a lot to do with my upbringing. I had to do a lot. I, I've been on my own since I was 15. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like, no, on my own. Yeah. Since I was 15, you know, uh, I've never had that crutch. I've never had a crutch. Yeah, you sprung angle, you're just gonna have to limp it, you know, kind of thing. So, so for me, and, and she'll tell me, you know, did you eat anything? She like she if she leaves for the day. Yeah. She said, Did you eat anything? I'm like, well, nah. <laughs> you know, or or I'll be in the house that's like right now I'm in my office, right? And she was like, you know, she she hit me up, like, are you hungry? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, yeah. She says, well, why don't you just say, baby, I'm hungry, I'll bring you something to eat, and this, that, another. <laughs> I have to ask. And she had to ask me. Yeah, I'm still getting used to asking for help because when I did ask for help as a kid, I never got it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that was a real thing, mm -hmm. you know, it was a real thing. So I was conditioned to not seek for help, figure it out on your own, figure, you know, create a way for you. And that that is a definitive thing. And, I, and we've had these conversations. I say I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm trying to get better at it, you know, because you'll ask me multiple things like, well, why didn't you ask me? And why didn't you ask me? But why didn't you ask me? Yeah. You know, kind of thing. So that's one thing that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very hard mm -hmm. in every area of my life. It's hard for me to ask for help mm -hmm. because I've been conditioned not to do so. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, same for you, Shakira, or you want me to go down the list again? Yeah, go down the list again. <laughs> okay. So what's harder for you to say? I a I apologize. B I need help. C I love you. Or D I was wrong. I feel like I'm pretty good at saying when I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Uh, wait, what was the first one again? The first one was I apologize. 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 Apologies can be. I don't mind a pop. <laughs> That's what you, okay. When I feel I'm right, I feel I'm right. But I do apologize. What's more difficult? You're not yeah. saying what you do or don't do. Yeah, yeah, difficult? which which one? Yeah, just from your I, personal perspective. I 
I apologize. What are you asking? Me? No, I'm, I'm, what do I, I, I can say I love you, but if oh, I'm mad, I love you. but if I'm mad, I don't want to talk to you. But, Facts. We need to talk about that part. But <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, uh, I would say, yeah, the first one. I apologize. Yeah, I apologize. I I, I agree, Sean. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Okay, I I hear that too. Sometimes that can be a struggle. Last question. Okay, Daryl, is it easier to love yourself or someone else? Mm, that is a great question. Easy. For me, honestly, Sean, it's easier for me to love someone else. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and you know that, that it's kind of a twofold. So so it, it depends. I know I look at things completely different sometimes, right? Yeah. There's no wrong answer. So, so love is an action, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. internally, intrinsically, I, I really do love me. But when it comes to showing love, it's easier for me to show love and demonstrate love to someone else than it is for me because I put her before me, mm -hmm. and it's easy for me to do that it's extremely it's effortless yeah. but if we have a disagreement mm -hmm. and i feel i'm right mm -hmm. if i feel that i i think i have a good pathway with this mm -hmm. it's very difficult for me to put my idea my pathway ahead of hers even if i feel as though her pathway is is kind of like, man, I don't know about this, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. It's like it's easier for me to to put her before me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, 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 and actually, it's it's extremely easy, yeah. You know, even when I feel like my thought process or whatever is more beneficial, mm -hmm. we 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 we're getting past the the right and wrong. What we're the words we use now are healthy and unhealthy. Mm -hmm. You know, so we don't say, uh, you know, I'm right. We'll say, hey, but well, this is healthy for us or this is unhealthy for us. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're, we're working on just not using right and wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. so if I feel like my pathway is more healthy. It's hard for me to put my thoughts above hers, if that makes sense. No, I understood, because I know because for my wife and I, even when we're in therapy, we learning to say this is a difficult conversation for for me. Yeah, so the groundwork. Yeah. So it it lays the groundwork of empathy, instead mm -hmm. of feeling like somebody coming for instead of instead of you feeling like they're coming for you. Right. So right. If, if you say this is uncomfortable for me, now you're the person that's receiving it. Now you can put on your grace helmet because you're like, okay, they might struggle with you know what I'm saying. So when you lay that groundwork, that's good. yeah. So that's that's working. That's that's helping us. That's yeah. good. That's real mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Uh, Shakira, is it easier to love yourself or someone else? So. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to break this down, right? Because mm -hmm. I love people. Like, I love on my people. I love on him. I love on the kids. I love on, I love hard. But here's something that I had to learn in my journey. Mm -hmm. You have to love yourself first. More than it, than you love anybody else. And the benefit to that is when you pour into yourself, and I say be selfish, not in the sense that I don't care about anybody else. Of course. Da, 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 da. You have to, if you pour into yourself as a woman, everybody else benefits. Facts. So I love myself more than anybody. The second is my husband. And I don't, I shouldn't say that. No, okay. no, I, I well, vibe with that. Well, here's, here's what I'm saying. Because like, I don't want you, you know what I'm saying, not taking care of yourself and all of this. <laughs> exactly. Kind of so, because yeah. oh, a lot of ladies do this, like for real. You put so much time and energy into attracting the husband, you get him, you lock him down, you get the papers. And then you just <laughs> completely, you're not working out no more, you're not eating right, you're not drinking yep. your water, you're not meditating, you're not going, whatever self care practices that attracted that man, you completely abandoned because you got it. Yep. It's the bait switch. Uh -huh. But when you pour into yourself and you love yourself more than anybody, everybody else 
benefits. So when I feel good about myself, when I love myself, when I'm happy, when I'm doing all the self-care practices, when I'm meditating, I'm committed to like growing myself, my husband benefits because I'm just a better wife. I'm happy. I'm this, I'm that. The kids benefit. I may, I'm like stable minded, so on and so forth. So I'm going to love myself first because I know that's essential to being the best wife and mother that I can be. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's like, it's, it kills two birds with one stone when you mm-hmm. say, I'm a, I'm, you know, Hey baby. Okay. I'm not gonna cook tonight, but I'm a, I'm a, or I'm a door dash and stuff and I'm gonna go to yoga. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna make sure some food is in the house because I gotta go to yoga because this literally happened. Like I have to go to yoga because I'm like about to, snap on all y'all so i'm yeah. going to go to yoga and y'all mm-hmm. got food and you good you know or i'm going to wake up early i'm gonna make your coffee mm-hmm. uh-huh. i'm gonna let you sleep more and i'm mm-hmm. gonna i'm gonna you know i'm gonna read and i'm gonna da, 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 da. so love on yourself first and then and then everybody else gets to benefit mm-hmm. when you when you love yourself first hey, you know what joshan i think that this is also another gender role thing Someone yeah. breaks in the house at two o'clock in the morning or something like that. Right. I'm laying down mine for everybody in the house. Of course. You know what I'm saying? I'm putting my life in, in risk for everybody in the house mm-hmm. because as a man, I can't stop being a man. Of course. You know, I, I, I am the protector. I am. There is nothing that's ever going to happen to her. It doesn't happen to me first. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's kind of like, yeah, I, I'm going to put you before me. And it's, it's, it's not even a question. Yeah. It's not even a question if that's ever a, a situation. I don't have to think about that. Right. You know, and it, it's an easy choice for me. You know, and I think and I want her to have the self-care to, you know, to do all of those kind of things. But mm-hmm. in the event that something has to go down and harm is going to happen to anyone, it needs to happen to me. Sure. You know, so not saying that I don't love myself. It's just it's 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 very easy for me to give of myself for the benefit of my family, you know. So I I, I think with that, I, I don't know, and, and I don't know. This is just my opinion, man. I'm not saying that my way is the way. I'm just saying it's a way. Mm-hmm. I feel that a man should put his wife before himself, and mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Uh, uh, it, it, that's just my thought process, and it works for me. That goes I, back to the, the gender rules. Like that goes back to knowing who you are because, you know, me saying I'm going to put myself first doesn't mean I love my family. It just means I, that I know what I need to do to be the best me as a woman in balancing that masculine and feminine energy. Mm-hmm. I am way in my feminine, like so way back in my feminine, <laughs> you know? And, and I love he's, it. He's so like in his masculine. He's like, like you said, like, I'm going to put... I'm going to put my family first, you know, but he knows I got his back. Right. You know, no matter what. I get upset when she opened a bottle. He does. (laughs) I hear you. What are you doing? What are you doing? doing? (laughs) You know, this is not your job. You know, know, she do anything that I feel a woman should not be doing when there's men around, Mm -hmm. whether it's me or one of the boys in the house. Look, 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 I can say this for her, right? We have three three kids, mm-hmm. three males, mm-hmm. kids mm-hmm. in the house with us. Mm-hmm. And me, so she lives with four men. Mm-hmm. It's no reason why she should ever touch a trash basket, open a door, have to do any heavy lifting. No reason. It's four men in the house. And when I catch her doing something, because she do stuff, <laughs> yeah. I can't, I'm like, I, I straight up, what, and I legit, what get, I legit get a little offended. I'm yeah. like, what are you doing? I'm like, what are you doing? You know, so, yeah. so yeah. And she don't let me be in the kitchen too much. I sure don't. Yeah. I, I can't clean dishes. I can't put nothing in there. None of that kind of stuff. But we're very, very clear on that. Mm-hmm. That's good. I love it. Because yeah. there was a, a, a quote that I put on Facebook today. I, I said, uh, it was to the women. I said that you are more than what you can provide for others. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. And I think a lot of times the women feel that their value is based on what they can do for others yeah Shakira, like you were saying when you can take care of yourself when your glass is full it's easy for you to pour on your family yeah uh-huh. you know so i i totally agree with you this has been a phenomenal show we've been rocking out for an hour i wow, thank you all so much yeah that was quick right i looked at the clock oh man so 
I just want to thank you all. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you all via social media. Great. Well, Glow Beauty Wellness on Instagram as well as YouTube. Okay. Glow Beauty Wellness, all one word, yeah. no underscores or nothing like that. Uh, what is mine? I, oh, no, I, oh, oh, that's crazy. I don't even know. Okay, so Instagram, <laughs> it's Daryl, D A R R Y L dot L dot Rivers. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, I think I'm just Daryl L Rivers. TikTok mm-hmm. is Daryl Rivers. Oh, man, look at, like look at all of that originality, right? <laughs> <laughs> or, or no, TikTok, think like a channel. Okay, thank, okay. I'll I'll have all uh, I'll have you all linked up in the description, so right that on. way if people want to connect with you, make sure yeah. So Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go connect with Shakira and and Daryl. They are phenomenal people. As you see, we've been kicking it. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this video with someone because you never know what someone is going through. And through their wisdom, they could possibly help a friend or a husband or a wife or you just never know. So make sure you share the video. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. By doing so, you put you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. We gave away a free Amazon gift card a couple months ago. Uh, Who doesn't like free stuff, right? So make sure you leave a rating and review. This is Sean Heineman, and thank you again, Daryl and Shakira, for being guests today. We are out. Thank you. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.